Welcome yet again to another video of me sitting in my spare room looking at obsolete crap. <laughs> it's a good way of distracting me from the, the outside world because it's pretty horrendous out there right now in terms of pandemics and politics and other such delights. So let's not think about any of that and let's talk about piracy in old video game consoles because that seems to be a bit of a theme with the channel right now. Um, piracy is the act of illegitimately using uh, copyrighted materials on a device without purchasing it um, or distributing it or la di da di da to be honest these devices uh, can get away with what they are due to the fact they can say that they are made for making backups of the copies that you have the right to own so technically I'm not endorsing piracy here and this video is supposed to be completely educational anyway you might recall the last device I looked at, which was the Action Replay for the PlayStation. A little box doodah device which allowed you to bypass the checks that a PlayStation does to make sure that you're using software it wants you to use. In my case, it was PAL region software that is legitimate. <laughs> not burned CDs, not American copies, not Japanese copies, just straight old European copies of PlayStation games. Uh, that are, you know, burned on a PC. Anyway, it's a bit different with consoles that take a cartridge. So the Super Nintendo, the, the Mega Drive, the what else takes a cartridge. All the original Nintendo consoles before the GameCube all took cartridges. And if you were a pirateer sailing the seven seas back in the day, you would know that it was very hard to, you know, pirate on a system which doesn't use a... A storage capacity that you can obtain from a shop and then burn content onto using your PC. <laughs> um, so, of course, the the buccaneer swashbuckling, you know, guys from the marketplaces and the, you know, whoever used to deal in this sort of crime had to come up with something that would allow you to play illegitimate copies of games on a console like this. Um, by the way. This console is patchy because of a experimental attempt they used to de-yellow it, which worked a little bit too well on this front plate. Anyway, that's the elephant in the room addressed. Now let's bring in another elephant, so to speak. Ta-da! This is what is affectionately known as... I say affectionately, I don't know if even its mother could love this thing. This is a super wild card. Which was a device which would allow you to play or load um, games illegitimately onto a Super Nintendo without using a cartridge. Um, it would also allow you to use a cartridge and put it on another storage medium for you to, you know, play back even though that cartridge might not be in your possession anymore, which is... You know, that's kind of piracy, um, especially if you don't actually own the game. You might be looking at this big hunk of junk and wondering how the hell does it do that? <sighs> Allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> this is a, this is going to be a bit lost in some people because I realise that, you know, different age groups sometimes watch this kind of content. Ladies and gentlemen, the Super Wild Card is a floppy disk drive. <laughs> And I do, I find this really amusing. So this is a floppy disk for those of you who aren't old enough to remember what a floppy disk is, which is kind of scary because that'll be a lot of people now. Um, floppy disk drives, um, there's like a, a floppy disk inside this sort of case of which stores information, kind of like a CD, you know, kind of like any other type of storage medium that you use. This is basically the same kind of thing. It holds 1.44 megabytes. Which is uh, <laughs> 1.44 megabytes. That's uh, that's not a lot of storage in terms of today. Um, but you know, it's enough to hold a Super Nintendo game. Or is it? Because we'll discuss that in a bit. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Kind of going off track a bit. So what would happen is, you would take a blank one of these. You would insert it into your Super Nintendo. You could then pop a cartridge on the top. And you can magically, and I say magically in inverted commas, put that game from that cartridge on that floppy disk. And then you could play it without the cartridge being there. Because it reads it off the floppy disk. Essentially, you've just pirated the game. 
So anyway, um, enough of me rambling about it. Let's uh, reposition the camera and let's, you know, see what this baby can do. So let's have a quick and dirty look at this device. Um, apologies if I speak too fast or if I stutter on my words or if I get out of breath really easily while I'm speaking on this video. It's all sort of ticks of my anxiety. Um, I'm trying to sort of uh, combat it, but it's kind of hard just now with the sort of situation we're all in. So apologies. Anyway, let's begin. So we have over here a collection of things. We have Super Nintendo, we have the Super Wild Card, which is a floppy disk drive. We have a couple of floppy disks there, and we have a game of choice, which is Castlevania 4. Because I'm in a Castlevania mood, and I recently watched the Netflix series, which is very good. I recommend you do that. Anyhow, let's begin. So, a wise man would begin by turning the console on. But before you do that, you want to make sure you've done a couple of things. You want to make sure you've put one of these into the disk drive. Now... You don't want to muck about with this while it's uh, switched on because it could do bad things to your console. Um, wiggling about cartridges while they're in a console isn't, you know, advisable. So you don't want to be wiggling about this when it's transferring all that power into it. Um, yeah, it does draw a lot of power because of the floppy disk drive. So just be wary of that. Um, you want to make sure you have everything plugged into it before you begin. For example, the floppy disk drive on the side has a floppy disk drive in it. Uh, sorry, it has a floppy disk in it. It obviously has a floppy disk drive in it because that's what it is. Um, it's actually just a normal floppy disk drive as well, which I find really funny. It, literally, if you took this out, you could put it in a PC or vice versa, which is good because it means if this drive ever burns out, I can replace it with one that would go in a PC. So that's really handy. Game of choice, Super Castlevania 4. You want to make sure you have that plonked in on the top. Turn the power in and... Everything's a go-go. So, let's just zoom out from this shenanigans and have a look at what's going on. So we have an obnoxiously green screen. Um, let's just zoom into it and have a look. Super wild card, it says, in really, you know, proud, bold lettering at the top. So let's have a look at what this bloody thing even does. So the first icon is a picture of a floppy disk drive, in case you can't see their artistic creativity. The artistic creativity from GSI, Front Far East Co, copyright 1993, which is hilarious because they spit in the face of copyright. Um, uh, yeah, so that's a floppy disk drive, that's a floppy disk, that's an exclamation mark, and that's a picture of a Super Nintendo cartridge. Let's start from the beginning. So, play game, restore SRAM, back up SRAM. This first option is for essentially playing a game of which is on a floppy disk. How does it get on that floppy disk, you may ask? Well, I'm about to show you that. If we back out of that, uh, this second option is for doing things to the floppy disk. So you can rename the files on the floppy disk, you can delete the files, you can format the disk, you can copy the files and then transfer them onto another disk. Um, you can do basically stuff you would do with a floppy disk drive on a PC, which is handy. Um, this third option, not really sure why this is on here, but you can basically password protect the the floppy disks, which I find a bit weird, but hey-ho. It might be something you want to do. Um, I'm not judging you. Um, people come from all walks of life. I don't know why you would bother putting passwords on a, a legitimate copy of a Super Nintendo game. Anyway, this last option is probably the most important option in this scenario. This is how we will basically take what is on the Castlevania 4 cartridge and put it onto a floppy disk. Meaning that we can take away the cartridge and just use the floppy disk. Meaning we have just copied the game, whether it be illegitimate or legitimate. In this case, it is legitimate because I own Castlevania 4 and therefore I am legitimately copying the game because I still own the game because I own the license. What I can't do is I can't then take that floppy disk and give it to someone um, because that would then be distributing legitimate copies of games. Anyway, I digress. Let's get on with this. Um, so we can, we can either play the game just as it is, which would just launch the cartridge that we all know and love. Um, we can play the we can play the game just straight off the cartridge without having to take the device off, which is good because it's a big hunk of junk, and who wants to be taking that in and out of their Super Nintendo all the time? Um, Data transfer, which is what we're going to use in a second, and backup test just allows you, I think, to check and see if the if it's able to happen, if you're actually able to transfer the cartridge to the disk. 
which is a bit weird, um, but actually practical because you'll see why in a minute. <laughs> Basically, you don't want to start something you can't finish because this is going to take a bit of your time. Um, let's go to data transfer. Two options, we can either transfer transfer cassette to disc or disc to cassette. Um, cassette being cartridge in this case, I'm sure. Um, I think they did actually refer to uh, Nintendo cartridges as cassettes, if I remember correctly. I think that is written on the back of them, so technically not the wrong terminology, but there you go. Um, so let's go to cassette to disc, because we want to take that cartridge and we want to stick it on a floppy disk. Asks us if we want single or multi-file. Um, I don't really know what the multi-file one does. Single file seems to do everything that you would expect it to do. Multi-file might be if you're making multi-copies of it, which again, shouldn't really be a thing if you're doing things legitimately, but <laughs> hey-ho. Let's just go to single file, and it allows us to name the cartridge. Um, I, rather than typing out Super, Super Castlevania 4, I'm just going to like abbreviate it. Um, it's a shame it doesn't just let you choose that text below. It knows what the game's called, which is quite clever. But then just doesn't let you actually <laughs> it doesn't actually let you use it. Um we'll just abbreviate it anyway. Super Oh sorry, you hit start to select super. We want C wherever C is hiding. If I could actually say my ABCs, I would know that. Super Castlevania 4. And after we're done, I think we just press B, which is you know, starts the process, I suppose. This is all very weird. Um, I can imagine this would be super handy back in the day, but uh, just now it just feels odd. Like, there's so many other ways you could play a Super Nintendo game. Um, there's flash carts and other such delights. Um, so yeah, these are really absurd devices. Um, it's currently saving, of which it demonstrates by counting down. Uh, the higher the number, the longer you're going to have to wait to get your game onto that floppy disk, son. <laughs> Uh, luckily, Super Castlevania 4 doesn't seem to be that bad. It seems to be saving it relatively quickly. So, that seems to be it. It's done. So, if we back out of this, so we press Y to back out. Now, here's where I'm going to have to zoom back out because um, I need you to sort of see what I'm doing rather than... I don't want you thinking I'm basically saying, oh, look, this thing works when it doesn't because that cartridge is still on the top. I'm going to take that cartridge out. So, let's... Flick the switch, take this cartridge and set it over there so that it's nowhere near the console. This is like someone, some magician or something trying to prove that their magic trick is legitimate. <laughs> um, hit the power again. And you can see there is no option for cartridge anymore because there is no cartridge plugged in. If we go to the first one, which is the floppy disk drive, and we select play game, Hopefully, this will see the file we just stuck onto the floppy disk, of which it does, if you can just see over there. There it is, it says SC4, which is Super Castlevania 4. Let's hit accept on that, and let's watch it slowly load the game into the console's RAM. <laughs> I mean, these wait times are nothing compared to what you would wait on a, a microcomputer from back in the day, which were really popular in the UK, so a lot of kids from this country would have like sat and waited for tapes to load for like five minutes and stuff, ten minutes, and then they would probably fail on the fourth minute and stuff like that. Um, this might take a little longer than like, a cartridge, but at least it's reliable, uh, so to speak. Anyway, right, this is this is important. This is something I want to like you know really show off, so to speak. So you've got normal mode, which will just run the game normally. You've also got something called memory mode, which is really cool because it's a feature that you see in modern day emulation and, you know, the mini consoles and, you know, the Retron 5 and other such devices. This is a thing you would expect to see in those devices, but it's present in a device from, when did that say? 1993? That was a long time ago for this kind of technology. Um, so basically, it allows you to... Well, we'll just read it from top to bottom. So you've got uh, the left bumper and select will allow you to run in slow motion. It basically just slows down the game. It runs at a slower frame rate so that if you're playing like a, a fast moving game, then you'd be able to, you'd be able to cheat, essentially. Um, that one's not as interesting as the next couple. So L and start allows you to memory game, memory game, which will basically save state your game so that you can jump. Um, back to when you last sort of save stated so yeah it's like save state so if you die 
you basically hit the left bumper and start, and it'll, it'll jump you back to where you last pressed the, the button. Um, well, L and start actually will save the game at any moment that you press it. Uh, right and start will then recall game, which allows you to jump to your save state. It's basically something you would do in modern day emulation, and it's really damn cool. And then L and R plus start um, apparently brings you back to some sort of menu, but I don't know what menu it actually brings you to, because I don't think I've ever tried it before. But we'll try it today. And I'm talking too fast again, so let's just start playing the bloody game before I have a heart attack. <sighs> I hope everyone's well, by the way. I hope you are all doing good. Um, I do worry about people during times like this. Um, it's hard. It's hard on everyone. Um, people with sort of mental health issues, it's just, it's, you know, it's just a shit show, to be honest. You end up just being a bit of a, a mile out. But anyway, um, hope everyone's doing well anyway. Here's the awesome intro screen to Castlevania 4. Brilliant game if you've never played it. It's probably my favourite Castlevania game. Um, seeing that, I'm actually playing, um, what's it called? The, is it Next Gen? No, it'll be the New Generation, um, which is on the Mega Drive. But I'm playing it on the Mega Drive Mini. That's pretty good as well. Um, pretty good Castlevania game. Um, Rondo of Blood is also really good. But, you know, um, Rondo of Blood costs a lot of money. <laughs> so it's something I won't be playing anytime soon. You can basically get that for, like, the PC Engine CD-ROM attachment. Uh, I don't own a CD-ROM attachment. I just own a normal PC Engine core graphics console. Anyway, I am just uh, ranting all the rubbish. Let's actually start the game. Just so you can see what these... Uh, Functions do, and I really love this opening. It's a really cool, just really simplistic opening, but some really nice sort of, uh, just really nicely done for the Super Nintendo, to be honest. Right, let's go. So, I love that you can just sort of wiggle the rip, the, the wriggle the rip, uh, wiggle the rip, the whip around like this. It's just really funny. Anyway, sorry. Um, there's occasionally sort of glitches with the sort of picture when you're using memory mode, which is probably because it's doing other things in the background, uh, and it's probably having some sort of detrimental effect on the console's performance, but hey-ho. Anyway, right, so, just to demonstrate, um, actually, if you allow me to jump cut a second, I'm about to run out of uh, space on my memory card, so one second, please. We are back, and I've zoomed in the screen a little bit more for you as well, so you can see what I'm actually up to. Um, okay, so to demonstrate, we'll actually go into the castle because uh, this would be Castlevania unless we saw this big drawbridge close us into our doom. I do love how it just really slowly sort of... <laughs> I love how it does that. It's like, quick, I don't want to go in, I don't want to go in, no! Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm really childish. Right, anyway, let's demonstrate uh, a few of the functions. Um, so I'm going to just... Play the game as normal, and then we'll, we'll use it in a situation. Um, so if I go up to here, now, before I fight this enemy, I'm going to press uh, the combination which would save a state. Um, now, the screen turning black there, I believe, means that you have did whatever you were trying to do properly. So I pressed L and start, which apparently saves states, or is it referred to it as memory game? So, um, yeah, it's going to remember that specific part of the game that I was at. Um, if we go up here and we fight this, uh, we fight this skeleton a little bit. Now you might see that I'm not fighting him at all because I'm going to deliberately let it kill me. Oh no! I progressed so much there, and now I'm back at the beginning. <laughs> Whatever shall I do? I know. I'll hit start and right uh, bumper, and we'll see what happens. There we go. And that's us back at the... <laughs> it's really cool, to be honest. There's a safe state function, so... Now we can go up there and whip that skeleton's arse. Uh, yeah. So... Just to demonstrate that again, if I decided, um... Let me see. Said I'm gonna jump down this hole. Oh no, I shouldn't have jumped down that hole. I'm gonna press a uh, right bumper and start again, and... There I'm back at that bit I was at with the skeleton. I mean, that's really cool, honestly. That's a handy feature to have. Um, I don't know what it's doing to the performance of the console because I have noticed some graphical glitches every now and then, but maybe that is just dirty contacts on the device itself or something. 
but that's really cool. That gives you the functionality of something that, honestly, I didn't see existing till these games were considered retro. So, a device from 1993 doing it's pretty cool. Now, I'm going to try the menu thing that it said. Oh yeah, it just brings you back to the Super Wild Card mem menu. Alright, okay, so that was the start, right bumper and left bumper. Um, restore memory, backup memory, I don't know if... Restore memory, what does that do? Hmm, I don't really know. Uh, backup memory. Uh, I think when you press that, you're pretty much... Ah, right, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't really know how you use that function, if I'm honest. Um, it brings you to the memory... It brings you to a menu for some sort of functionality. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah. Super Wildcard. It's a floppy disk drive. Nobody knows what a floppy disk is anymore, apparently. But, you know what? It's a really weird and cool device um, for your Super Nintendo. Might allow you to share your games illegitimately in the playground if uh, kids weren't into Fortnite and iPads. But hey, there you go. Um, just to demonstrate as well, I think I have another game on one of these. Uh, on one of these floppy disks. Um, don't know if it's this one. I'm just gonna chance my arm here. See if it's this one. Now, what this could be handy for, which I've been thinking about recently is uh, if you didn't have any other way, if you had one of these devices and you didn't have any other way to, you know, play sort of, uh, I don't know, like, uh, the fan community sort of uh, homebrew stuff is what I'm trying to say, sorry. Homebrew is the name. Um, homebrew content. Uh, you could, in theory, get a floppy disk drive for your computer, burn some content onto a floppy disk and put it into this and it'll play it. Just in case you don't have any other way to do that. Now, a lot of people will use um, the other drives, which use SD cards, or essentially like a cartridge. It allows you to put stuff on an SD card, then put it on the cartridge, and then your console will read it. But to be honest, they're quite expensive, so if you've got one of these lying around, then you would rather use one of them, to be honest. Uh, I think I put the desk in, I can't quite remember. Okay, let's just see if I did. I possibly didn't, which is where this video will end. And you'll notice that the... It's actually froze because I think I, I kind of whacked it while I was over there. That's why you need to make sure you do everything to this before you turn it on because it can be quite sensitive, just like any cartridge would be, I suppose. Right, let's see what's on this. Hopefully there's something on here. Ah, there is. I don't know what this is though. It says TRS-1 and TRS-2. Uh, we'll go to TRS one, I suppose. I can't remember doing this. I know, I knew that, I knew, I know that I was messing about with this at some other point in my life. I just don't know what game this actually is. Um, try to think. Can't remember what I was last, you know, using on this. It's probably when I first, you know, acquired this thing that I was playing about with it. I got it off eBay for really cheap, something like fifteen quid or something like that. Um, if somebody clearly just didn't know what it was, um, because I think they go for a lot of money. Um, let's just run it in normal mode. See what this actually is. Now, just to remind you, just in case you've forgot, this is just solely running off a floppy disk. It was once a cartridge, now it's been burned onto a floppy disk, so let's just see what it is. Ah, oh, it's Parodius. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know what Parodius is, it's a parody shooter, um, sometimes referred to in, you know, retro gaming as, or not even retro gaming, I suppose there's modern takes on this genre as well. The genre, I believe, is called cute em up <laughs> So basically everything's a bit wacky and cute and, you know, you can go Twin Bee or an Octopus or uh, Vic Viper, which I think's from Gradius, possibly, I can't quite remember. Um, or you can go Pentaro, which is a penguin, which... Of course I'm going to go Pantaro. What do, what do we think this is? Um, so yeah, just have a wee quick shot of this before I wrap up the video. Hopefully you've got the gist of how this thing works. Um, if I've not explained anything properly, um, I can always make a follow-up video. Yeah, you can put some comments down below just so that I can clarify a few things. I don't mind. I know it's not always uh, clear in some videos. Uh, 
the functionality of a device, especially if I've missed something out and it's something that's maybe important to you. This this game's insane. I'm collecting like sweeties in space while getting attacked by syringes. <laughs> um Yeah, and I'm a flying penguin. Penguins can't even fly, never mind like survive in space, so God knows what's going on here. Maybe I'm having a fever dream because of this pandemic. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, that's enough of that for one day. Um, so that was the Super Wild Card. Thanks very much for watching this video. Um, I'll probably make more videos in the future. If you need anything answered about this device, just ask me down below, I suppose. Um, this is sort of just a quick show and tell. It wasn't supposed to be anything in depth. Um, if I think of anything else interesting to do with this device, I'll make a follow-up video. I've got a couple of ideas, but I need to see if they're feasible before, you know, starting a video and making an arse of myself. Anyway, hope you're all safe and well, and I'll catch you again soon. Goodbye.